the ability to help the foundation day to be critical with it. Thank you for joining us today and I hope to see you again at our future events. Good evening everyone. I would like to begin by respectfully acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation as the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we stand. We pay our respects to their elders both past and present. Hello everyone and welcome to another Affinity A Plus Youth Lecture. My name is Madeline Goodsir and I am a friend of the Affinity Intercultural Foundation. For those of you who have not attended an Affinity event before, let me briefly introduce you to the organisation. Affinity was formed by a group of young Muslims in 2000. Their aim is to promote multiculturalism and foster intercultural and interfaith dialogue by building bridges between different groups in society. To give you a brief idea of the wonderful work that Affinity does, they've put together a short recap video of their events in 2018, which we'd like to share with you now. great career and it's wonderful to see them in the context of a great organization, Affinity. First of all, I'd like to thank our sponsors here, especially uh, Mr. Ahmed Polat. Thank you so much. Thank you too to the foundation uh, for the opportunity to be here. Faith is so profoundly important for our development and humanitarian work. Because we've got some expertise here uh, that is, uh, when it's brought together, is extremely valuable. So I asked the Vice President Global of Education for Microsoft why. And those are the values that I would continue uh, to advocate being taught in law schools in this country. Uh, from a UN report describes Yemen as now the world's worst humanitarian crisis. Thank you all for, um, for being here. Thank you, Ahmed, and uh, the Affinity team uh, for allowing me to, to speak, ladies and gentlemen. It's an absolute honour to be here tonight to help launch an exciting new lecture series focused on young people. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, Barack and the Affinity Intercultural Foundation, um, I'd like to acknowledge the fantastic work that you do in the community and um, bringing different cultures and people of different religious backgrounds together. I think it's fantastic. How human rights safeguards children and young people. This is indeed a commendable goal and I'm delighted to be here today to be part of that dialogue. In my view, Affinity is doing excellent work to inform and advance multicultural Australia to keep peace in this country. Congratulations to Affinity. Thank you, Affinity, for this wonderful opportunity. I with Sev laud the work of Affinity. Uh, there is no other organization working in the field of interreligious relation that does it the way they do it and promote actual encounter of an ordinary sort between people of all sorts of diversities. I think it's heartwarming. It's one of the few things in life that really continue to give me hope and joy. So what then I believe is that this identity politics to a large extent in India has not become obstacle for the development of democracy, but rather it has enriched the democracy. My day is very focused on thinking about that. Uh, we have, so we have a news conference at nine o'clock and then at half past two, which is the afternoon one is very much looking through to those evening digital sessions, but also of course the newspaper. Uh, can I just firstly just to say thank you to Affinity for the invitation to come along today. It's a great pleasure to be here this morning and obviously following in some very esteemed company. So it's a, it's, a, it's a great privilege for me to be here also to acknowledge my parliamentary colleague Jenny Beyong. It's fulfilling to an extent, but there's got to be something that's greater than that. And that's how I see my contribution into Affinity and what Affinity does. So Affinity stands for promoting multiculturalism, stands for promoting interfaith dialogue, stands for promoting a good things in our community. Our speaker tonight asked me, um, as we were talking before, so are you involved with this organisation? And I said, yes I am, because I believe in what they do. And I'm very proud of them. I'm proud to be on the board. I want to thank Ahmed and your team for um, inviting uh, me to be along tonight. I have been here before and I've enjoyed it. This is probably my third time. 
And, and like Mary said, you know, it's that, and I think somebody actually on the DVD said, it's that opportunity for people who we live everyday lives just to be together and actually get to know each other and um, see each other as people first and foremost. So it's a really amazing thing that you're doing. And thank you so much. I think Affinity is a great organisation. I was going to wander around and talk, but I realised you only get to be on the video if you have the Affinity sign behind you. So I'm going to stay right in front of it. Sport is one of those um, codes that binds us in, in ways that are really quite significant. It also is a subject of deep and passionate division, and here I must declare first. <laughs> <laughs> the academies are a program to support and empower Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students to take control of their future through in-school and after-school support, and we are so proud of our contribution to helping improve the educational outcomes for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities of Western Sydney. And I've seen this uh, networking non-for-profit organisation go from its humble beginnings, working with the grassroots of Australia, and to now where we are creating dialogue with all Australians from all walks of life. And I'm very glad that Affinity has brought us together and brought us together with you. Thank you all very much for coming. I pay my respects to the indigenous people of our continental country, uh, and I pay my respects to uh, all the people who are connected with affinity. And I think if Ataturk were around today, he would thoroughly approve people reaching out, uh, seeking to understand each other, and in particular in countries of the book. That we must be vigilant all the time to protect our human rights and of all our sisters and brothers in this community. Many thanks to Affinity for inviting me to come along and talk to you about probably my favourite topic to talk about, which is the Anthropocene. And I think we've seen two diverse law schools here. It's important that um, law schools are different uh, and in some respects that they stick to their knitting, that they, they deal with what they're most expert at. Creating better cohesive relationships and really making it a safe and I think a very happy place to live and I think it gels very nicely with Ahmet's affinity theme because it's so related, it's, it's about restoring and promoting I think strong and healthy relationships throughout the community. What we tried to do at the Bangsam Poetry Slam and what we've been successful in doing is helping people find their stories and, and express themselves in a way that is cathartic for them. Looking to the future in terms of where these problems can originate so part of this campaign to stop domestic or family violence has actually been targeted at young children. Now I'm not going to pretend for one second we got it right or that we still have it right, but we got a lot better at it. We introduced things such as domestic violence liaison officers. We've talked a little bit about education, but um, actually we should be doing this with kids when they are at the very youngest age. Um, it's too late to start when they're teenagers. This is such an honour to be here tonight with the esteemed names that sort of select home before me. It is very much a privilege and thank you to Ahmed, Burak and Ernest for having me here tonight. I think that what White is suggesting is that protesting has become a meaningless fad, that it is seen to be too readily engaged in without bringing about meaningful change. Once again, thank you for attending today. I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much. Love you guys. I would now like to introduce today's facilitator, Noor Hadar. Noor Hadar is a state political reporter with ABC News in New South Wales. During her time at the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, Noor has covered major stories of local and national significance for TV, radio and online, including the recent New South Wales election and the Wentworth by-election. Prior to joining the ABC, she worked as a producer at Sky News Australia. In 2018, she was one of 13 journalists in Australia awarded the inaugural Our Watch Fellowship by the Walkley Foundation and is dedicated to improving reporting on violence against women. Please join me in welcoming Noor to the stage. <laughs> 